I'm going to remove 20 sins right now because this is the Resident Evil 5 game we deserved and also the one we needed. Yeah, I know how the saying goes. This recording of Nicole is incomplete and we learned that in the final chapter of the game. But what is stopping Isaac from seeing the rest of the clip now? I mean, it just ends here as if the transmission was cut short. And if Kendra is the one who gave Isaac this portion of the clip, then why at the end of the game does she call him out as insane? It's true that he's been seeing Nicole throughout the ship as a result of the marker, but it's not as if Isaac had concluding evidence that Nicole was dead. You can't call someone insane if they're making logical decisions with the information that they possess. The fact is, Isaac isn't insane, he's misinformed because of you and delusional because of the marker. There's a difference, sweet cheeks. So that's Ishimura. Impressive. The USG Ishimura. Biggest planet cracker in her class. And you are the biggest prick in your class. Never heard of a total communications blackout on one of these things. You'd think with a thousand people on board, someone would pick up the phone. Directive B clearly states diagnose and repeat communications blackout, so either Kendra did not read the mission directives, or... Actually, that's pretty much it. What is that? Do the script writers even know what communications blackout even means? Gravity tethers engaged. Automatic docking procedures ago. Even if you have automatic docking procedures, you can't dock without confirmation from the port you are landing on. For example, if a jet wanted to land on an aircraft carrier, there would be some communication between air traffic control and the pilot, like dock at platform B9 or wait two minutes until the safety net has been secured. Now, obviously, they can't because of the communications blackout, but don't they have some sort of procedures in place that allows them to dock or remain idle outside the Ishimura to avoid any unnecessary disasters in space? Because after the stunt they just pulled, the game should be rolling credits. Hit the blast shields! That guidance tether is damaged. Switch to manual, now. Inside the magnetic field? Are you insane? Abort! Okay, lady. A, you are a computer systems analyst, so you should do something akin to shutting up. And B, what other options are there? Just let the damaged tether guidance system smash them into the hull of the ship? Maybe you two should get back to your seats, huh? Or maybe you want to know what the pins feel like in a bowling alley. Hold still, Isaac. I'm sinking up everyone's rig with the ship. The ring in this game serves as an indication of health remaining, so in other words, a hit point meter. But what exactly are the usages for this? When did the company executives or Earth leaders or whatever group of people that were in charge of this endeavor get together and say, hey, I think everyone needs an HP gauge? It still fails even if you look at it from a story writer's perspective. I mean, Kendra doesn't have one, and the only reason Isaac has one is because we need to know how much health we have when playing the game. But it just seems like a pointless feature for all the other characters. If the game gives any character a rig, it's basically telling you who is going to die. Someone was a Star Wars fan. Kendra, get that elevator back online. Power's dead. I can't. Then we root the damn power. Kendra and Hammond bicker like an old married couple close to about seven chapters through and half the time when Isaac is around. Even when he's not, they'll call him up to share. Sometimes it's so displeasing to hear I've started wondering if this hologram communications device has a hang up function. There's blood on the floor here, but the game insists that Isaac is a mute, so he isn't able to inform the others. So before you enter the room on the Ishimura, Hammond calls Isaac to come and hack the door pad. But there's some doors that say locked on them. Isn't the whole point of hacking to gain access to something? Also, if Isaac is the only one who's able to hack the doors on the ship, how do Kendra and Hammond get around? Is someone hiding an electronic skeleton key that Isaac doesn't know about? Either way, it's sinful as frig. The tram system's offline. Getting around is going to be difficult. The tram system is the only way around. Unless you're planning on using the vents, you are screwed. The air seems to be flung again. That's a start. There was no ventilation? Save for Isaac, all of you should be gasping for oxygen right about now. What was that? Did you hear that? Not sure. How can you be not sure if you heard something? Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. Let's talk about the automatic quarantine system on board the Ishimura. It locks all doors within a specific area when it detects a hazardous anomaly. First of all, what difference does it make if the anomaly is hazardous? When you are in space, anything from a rip in fabric to a contaminant in the atmosphere should be enough to trigger a quarantine. Secondly, if the contaminant can infect others through air circulation, why doesn't it lock down the vents as well? And shouldn't there be oxygen tanks in every room to deal with this scenario? Thirdly, why does the quarantine lift after all the necromorphs die? Whether the anomaly is alive or dead isn't significant to the quarantine. Otherwise, it should say, dangerous bioforms detected and bioforms terminated and then release the hatches. And finally, if the automatic quarantine is triggered by necromorphs or anything hazardous, why isn't every room on the Ishimura on lockdown? Has anyone noticed that this elevator only starts moving after this necromorph dies? What kind of BS plot convenient elevator is this? You fix the tram, and I'll help you find the coal. All Isaac ever does in this game is take orders from others. Even when there are no humans left, he starts taking orders from the marker. Anything anyone orders him to do in this game can simply be shortened to fetch, roll over, shake, sick him, boy. Now we have to get to the bridge, but first, we gotta repair the tram system. Did I miss the part of the plan about how they were going to escape? Because that would have been the first thing anyone should have brought up. 
Instead, Hammond is casually trying to finish the mission, like, yeah, the tram needs to be repaired, the data board needs replacing, we need to access the personnel files on the bridge, and oh, one of my co-workers got mutilated, need to file a report for that. Looks like that door is malfunctioning, Isaac. Look, I can live with the fact that everyone has Isaac's friggin' phone number, but how do they know what Isaac is up to or if he's encountered a problem? You can't create a mute player character then pretend they're having conversations with everyone else. Isaac is nothing short of a mute telepath in this game. Isaac, it's Kendra. Oh, thanks for telling me your name. For a second, I thought you were the ghost of Christmas past. The boys in the flight lounge must have left. That's lucky for us. In other words, B to the S. Also, I'm starting to think that everything that comes out of Hammond's mouth is just copious amounts of BS. Isaac, get back to the Kellyon and prep it for launch. Also, also, last time I checked, neither of you three is a pilot. So I can only assume that the ending of this game is just going to be a failed Top Gun landing sequence. Side, we're going Your to die out here. Your confidence in me is to be noted, Miss Daniels. But I have a mission to complete, and that's exactly what I am going to do with or without you. I'd love to see that happen considering she's a primary mission asset. Clearly, no one read the mission logistics. If the USG Kellyan was sentient, this would translate to, screw this, I'm out. Sorry Isaac, but even with this suit, you're dead. This announcement wasn't there the first time they crashed, but is there now to add comedic insult to injury. Let's talk about Isaac's objectives during the events on the Ishimura. He has been requested or ordered to do several missions far outside his area of expertise. From mechanical and biochemical engineering to operating heavy artillery, spacewalking in zero-g as an astronaut, killing mutated and infected corpses akin to a militia army man, and piloting a spacecraft. This guy has done so much that if he were to list all his experience on a resume, it would be 50 pages long. Did they grow these babies from an individual cell? And if so, how are they breathing in this liquid? This moment here was downright creepy the first time playing. It deserves three sins off. Why would a centrifuge require a decontamination chamber? Sounds like something that would belong on, I don't know, a medical deck? Just me? Okay. Why does Temple leave all these logs lying around? They basically tell the story of his struggle on the Ishimura after the retrieval of the marker, but how does this help him? He's compromising his time and safety for a few minutes of reflection. And if it's to keep a record or a testament to what happened on the Ishimura, then maybe the moron should have kept the audio logs on him. When were you going to tell us about the artifact, Hammond? This marker. Kendra is so cranky in this game, she should change the name on her identification papers to Ebenezer Scrooge. I don't know anything about that. It's referenced in the captain's records. They brought it up from the planet. It's on the ship? In cargo. They think it's of alien origin, but I don't know what the hell it is. Really? CEC didn't know anything about it. You're lying. Back up. Is this a bad time to ask what this delightfully illuminating conversation has to do with getting out of here? By the way, Isaac, be careful. I saw something out there. I don't know what. It was big. Really big. Another way to say this would be, go fight the boss, Isaac. Stand back. Well, that one was dead when I sealed the pod. These things don't die easily. Hammond must be a miracle worker since I can't imagine how he got the necromorph in the escape pod while it was still alive. No, it was an accident. I, I had to stop him. It's either an accident or you had to stop him. You can't accidentally purposely do something. This part sucked so hard, I'm gonna give it two sins. Yeah, I suck at this game. Big deal. Oxygen levels are falling. Something's poisoning hydroponics air production, and whatever it is, it's filling the deck up with that organic stuff. We're not gonna have any air to breathe soon. But if I understand these lab reports correctly, I think I can make a poison to destroy it. Becoming an expert in any immediately desired career takes all but 20 seconds. You can't stand in the way of God's plan. The natural order. Are you... are you blind like the rest? No, but I am intelligent enough to know when you need an inhaler. You're close to the chemistry station. Once you get the chemicals, you're also going to need a DNA sample of the alien tissue. The people in this game go through more career changes than the number of instant noodle bowls you could make in a week. Your fight for survival is admirable, but pointless. Uh, and yet you keep on going. I have to admit, this voice acting is pretty good. I can definitely attest to hating this guy throughout the whole game. Kudos to the VA. We tried to find it. It's bad down here. Really bad. You can hardly breathe. The organic matter is growing everywhere. My eyes are stinging. But I know... <laughs> 
that it's worth it because even if I die, slowing down the organism, <coughs> poisoning the air will help us all live longer. <coughs> Wait, is there some sort of dimensional matter transporter on the ship that I don't know about? Yes, considering he turns left here into a wall. And this isn't even the end of this BS. These specimens will return to Earth with me. Well, have fun getting off this ship without a ship. Why in the pastry chef's curry plate would a mining vessel need a cryogen- Watering cycle initiated. It should rephrase to loud as hell watering cycle initiated. I gotta look at it. It's huge. Shut itself in food storage. Hammond gets past a locked vault and gets a look at the Leviathan without suffocating to death. Thanks, younger me. Couldn't have said it better myself. Actually, I could have, but I was too lazy to do so. So thanks to Mr. Bad Decisions, we know the current whereabouts of the Leviathan. And according to Kendra in Chapter 5, it entered the hydroponics deck from outside the ship. But how did it get into food storage? There's no feasible location from which a creature that large could have even entered the hydroponics deck, let alone traverse through multiple rooms into food storage. Damn it. The poison wasn't strong enough. It's still alive. Get in there and kill it before it contaminates the entire ship. Yes, let me get right in there and kill a creature roughly 110,000 times my weight class with weapons barely strong enough to hold back 10 necromorphs. That should end well. Isaac, you did it. Isaac deserves a flippin' medal for this. I think I could disable the lock from here. Hold on. Okay, the door's unlocked, Isaac. Isaac plus marker equals hallucination of Nicole unlocking the door to the power of BS. Are you telling me that an entire ship equipped with the sole purpose of combat couldn't kill one necromorph? The Valor wanted to help so bad that when they received the coordinates for the Ishimura, they headed straight for it. And I mean straight. Also, all of you guys are dead. Also, also, Isaac doesn't move because he figures that even if he'd ran, he'd just die tired. The infection is merging the stasis unit into their flesh or something, making them move fast, real fast. Stasis is used to slow down fast objects and enemies. Clearly, it should have the opposite effect. These poor bastards didn't stand a chance. Again, one necromorph. Isaac, I'm tracking your position, but it doesn't look like I can reach you. This damn ship was nearly shared in half. I made it to the bridge. I'm going to override all door locks so you can get to the engine room. I'll try and catch up with you there. Hammond apparently got through a plethora of locked doors to get to the Valor's bridge. Or he managed to find another way around that didn't even have life support systems functional. Clearly, Hammond also has a dimensional matter transporter. This scenario demonstrates the immense qualities of the engineering suit. Not only does it protect you from any extreme heat in the immediate area, the suit regulates a comfortable air temperature courtesy of a built-in AC. In addition, the engineering suit functions as a viable inferno repellent, as normally standing behind any obstruction does not prevent flames to engulf everything. Don't you think it's kind of sad that this man got shredded before he managed to kill a single necromorph? I just lost all of Hammond's vitals. Is he dead? How do you not know this? You've kept tabs on everything Isaac has done so far to the point that he couldn't even use the bathroom without you knowing. And now you don't know when something has happened? Get the heck out of here with this rule changing nonsense. Is this really the renegade awesome held it together temple in the audio logs that we had the pleasure of listening to? Because what I see are the diaries of a wimpy temple. And dead girlfriend. Also, does the game really expect me to believe that Mercer captured Elizabeth and Temple alive and managed to drag both of them to an area where Isaac was able to witness their deaths before Isaac got there? Really pushing the limits here, developers. Mr. Clark, I really must speak with you. What do you think you are doing, fool? How is Dr. Mercer able to give unitology recruitment speeches in public on board the Ishimura? This vessel is a larger scale platform for work no different from an office building or a ship. And it's not like he's inviting them to have coffee and donuts to discuss the philosophical nature of God and the meaning of life. He's inviting them to enjoy a grotesque suicide. Excellent work, Mr. Clark. Excellent work. Kain loves the word excellent so much he should just write it down and tape it to his forehead. Marker is retrieved from the cargo hold in an upright position but decided to lie down when it reaches the hangar. Kain is shot from his left but has a gaping hole in the front of his chest. Also, Dr. Kain was on the shuttle the whole time so how Kainra got there without him knowing is beyond me. I also want to mention that besides Isaac, friggin' everyone in this game can teleport. I'll report on the shuttle so we can fly down to the colony. I'm adding five sins just for the fact that this is the second time Isaac's hallucination has done some convenient BS. Return, not replace. Jeez, even the marker doesn't know what it wants. Emergency. Geo-orbital gravity tethers offline. Tectonic load released. 
How? See? You're insane. Just like Khan, just like the captain. Nicole has been dead this whole time. Except you should have no way of knowing that Isaac's hallucination was of Nicole, so the basis of this entire monologue is pure assumption and coincidence. Also, Kendra must have learned to stop breathing since the chances of this planet having the exact amount of nitrogen and oxygen levels required to sustain human life is extremely unlikely. There is no way Isaac had enough time to have this conversation with Kendra, run back to the shuttle, engage the hive mind, and put enough distance between the shuttle and the planet before the tectonic load collided with Aegis 7. You're dead, Isaac. Again. Hive Mind kills Kendra without even showing itself in a matter of seconds, but decides it's a good idea to play pinball with Isaac. Also, no way in hell did Isaac defeat Necrozilla. Isaac has evolved from hacking to open a door to opening any locked door by simply punching it. The source of illumination of Isaac's face is the utter blackness of outer space. Cut him apart!